Well, good Wednesday morning, everyone. And today is November 11th, and it is Veterans Day. So first and foremost, let's thank all of our veterans out there for their service. And to all of our future veterans, uh, thank you for considering uh, your service. Um, and we hope you help you go through with it. Um, but at any rate, uh, today we are jumping into the 11th chapter. We got a lot of 11s going on today. November the 11th of November and the 11th chapter. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, so I wonder what's up with all of that. So anyway, we're going to dive into, again, the first, just the first four uh, verses of the 11th chapter of Luke's Gospel. And that gets us to um, one of my favorite things to talk about, um, the Lord's Prayer. Um, there's three of my favorite things to talk about are in Luke's Gospel. Do you ever wonder why I like Luke's Gospel so much? Um, not such of a surprise, is it? Not really at all. Um, so we're going to look at Luke's Gospel's version of the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer today. Um, and of course, it's an important prayer. It's the prayer we every Sunday we hear at, at Woodlawn, we recite the Lord's Prayer as part of our service. And I apologize, I've got... I'm going to pull this over here and I'm going to get rid of... Forgive my close face there. Get rid of all of those bells and whistles today. Shut off the sounds. Because um, I forgot to do that. And, uh, yeah, you didn't need to see a close-up of, of Pastor today, did you? No, not at all. Anyway, um, so let's get back to the, to the, <laughs> the matter at hand, the Lord's Prayer. Um, and, again, this is the first four verses of the 11th chapter in Luke's Gospel. Um, and we'll read them, and then we're going to talk about this, by golly. So let's go. Um he was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive ye. forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Okay, that is the Lord's Prayer in Luke's Gospel, as translated by the NRSV. There's a lot of interesting things about, the, about that, uh, about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, first, it's interesting to notice in, in, in Luke's Gospel that the Lord's Prayer comes out after he's already sent these guys out, um, you know, the, 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 just the, the apostles and then the 70, and he's had them out healing and driving out demons and whatnot, and now he's going to teach them how to pray? Wow, seems a little... That seems a little backwards, but that's what it is. Uh, can't explain that one. Don't know why. Just seems a little curious to me. Um, but at any rate, here what he's not doing is telling you necessarily that this is the, the you know when you pray, he says say, and it's it's this is kind of a the idea is that this is kind of a pattern for prayer, right? Uh, the first you you glorify God, hallowed be your name, then you recognize that His kingdom is coming. And then you thank him, uh, you lift up uh, a request to him, and then you uh, ask for forgiveness, um, and then you model yourself after God. And then you ask for, for uh, deliverance from, from trial, temptation. So, um, having gone through that that quickly, now I'm going to back up and go through it slower, slowly. Um, the interesting thing about the Lord's Prayer is we find it in exactly three locations, okay? Two of which are in our canon, one of which is not. Um, we find the Lord's Prayer, of course, in Luke's Gospel. We just read it, didn't we? And then we also find it in Matthew's. It's not in Mark's, it's not in John's. Um, but we find it in both Luke and Matthew, though there is a little difference. So here is the NRSV's translation of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew. It's found in the six chapters, verses 9 to 13 in Matthew. And this again is the NRSV because I've read it in the NRSV over here. I'll read it in the NRSV over here so we can see commonalities. Otherwise, if I read a different translation, the, the words might vary anyway, right? Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Okay, it's a little more complete than what we're used to, to saying. I can remember one time um, I was in a Sunday school class for working with little, little, little kids at Benson Baptist, and one of the teachers wanted to, um, to uh, read the 
the kids the Lord's Prayer uh, out of Scripture. And so I told her, okay, well, it's uh, you know, 11th chapter of Luke, beginning of the 11th chapter. So she opened the Bible to the 11th chapter of Luke and read what we just read a minute ago, 1 to 4. And when she got done, she goes, well, that's not right. Aha, well, it isn't exactly that way. Um, the version we find in the Didache is much more is much closer to what we actually are used to reciting. Um, this is Lightfoot's translation um, of the uh, eighth, it landed in the eighth chapter of the Didache, the teaching of the twelve is another name for it, um, and it's verses three to ten in the Didache, in the eighth chapter. Neither pray you as the hypocrites, but as the Lord commanded you in his gospel, thus pray you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, as in heaven, but also on earth. Give us this day our daily bed, forgive us our debt, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. And the thing you notice there, why it sounds more, more like what we're used to praying, is it has the doxology on it. Uh, there are a few early or few versions, later versions of Matthew that have the doxology. The early and the best translations don't. Um, the doxology is found only in the Didache. And that's that last part, for yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Or as we say, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. It's a little different in the way we say it today. Um, but they are very, they are similar, but yet slightly different. Um, so it's not exactly, and of course you have to remember Jesus was saying that prayer in Aramaic. And then they translated it into uh, Greek. And so that's, there's some some things that are lost in translation. Um, and I do want to, as, as some of you may already know, there is a part of this that I think is very important for us to look at. Um, looking at it as we are traditionally used to saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Of course, we're recognizing, again, that's that lifting up to God. We recognize where he is. Hallowed be thy name, the glory of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We are, you know, the kingdom, first of all, the kingdom's coming here, right? It's not like we're going to the kingdom. The kingdom, his kingdom is to come here. Um, thy will be done. We're placing our, our will is secondary. Our will is not the important part, is it? Our, the, it's God's will that's to be done on earth as it is in heaven again on earth not, not you know it's not only in heaven that god's will is is to be implemented it's to be here as well um give us this day our daily bread now we'll finish finish us this then we're going to come back to that daily because the really peculiar thing here is so far those were all very ethereal things weren't they those were big things and then we zip back down to Get me by for today. That's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. Um, and then let's go on. And forgive us our trespasses, our sins, our debts, um, as we forgive those who trespass, sin, or our debtors against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, one of the peculiar things people notice always is that you have sins, trespasses, and debts. I grew up traditionally saying trespasses and I and I kind of actually like trespasses best here at Woodlawn and I believe that at, at the uh, First Baptist it was sins that they that they did um, and we use sins here um, I don't think there's a big big issue with any of the three I don't think you're you know, there's no there is no big issue with it, any of the three go ahead and use whichever version you prefer which way you learned it um, same theological influence there it's those that have, that, have, that have harmed us and we're forgiving them and we want you to, God to forgive us for the harm we've done to God, okay? Um, but do not lead us into temptation, or sorry, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And again, there's deliver us from evil. And the one thing we want to be careful of, that God does not lead us into temptation. That's That actually is a, not the best translation of that, um, you know, um, deliver us from the evil one probably is closer to you know what the didache has got there okay um all right and the nrsv has do not bring us to the time of trial that's probably again a better translation from the greek um than than what we traditionally say but we're used to saying it that way so it means something to us so 
let's we'll go with it. Um, but God does not tempt you. James, the, the letter from James tells us that God does not tempt anyone. Um, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and we're recognizing God's kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That's that doxology at the end. That's that lifting up of this this, this magnificent grace and, and recognition of the power and the grace of God. And that's a beautiful part. We would really, you know, we when we read those others, and, and likewise when, when us Protestants um, go to a, a Catholic service and they don't use the doxology at the end, we feel kind of like, ah, it's, it's, <laughs> we got to finish this thing. Um, we need that part at the end. At least I feel that way. Um, I go to a Catholic funeral or, or service service and do the Lord's Prayer. I always have to make sure I don't, you know, the Protestants in the group because they keep going. Um, and uh, it, you always feel kind of like you missed something. But let's go back to that daily bread. That's what I want to really talk about this morning. Uh, we've already talked quite a while, but we want to talk some more about the daily. Um, there is a word there, daily, um, in the Greek. It's episio is the word that you find there in the Greek. And that word, interestingly enough, is in existence in all of all of the ancient Greek that we have. We find that in very few places. It is found in exactly three places. Matthew's Gospel, Luke's Gospel, and the Didache, and in the Lord's Prayer. That's the only place in all of Greek that we find that word is in three spots. That's it. Nowhere else. Um, it's an interesting thing. So whatever Jesus said here in Aramaic was a word that was so magnanimous, so whatever, so different, unique to, a, to the Greek that they had to come up with a new word. Now there was close to 20 or so words in Greek that can be used to render the word daily. And I would present to you that it probably is, doesn't mean daily. Um, because he could have used you know, Luke, Matthew, the author of the Didache, whoever he might have been. It may have come from Q, the Lord's Prayer. That's where some of the people believe that because it's not in Mark's Gospel um, and that it is in Luke and Matthew, that, that the Lord's Prayer was in Q. And that might have actually might have been the, uh, perhaps the original source. Maybe the Didache got it from Q also. Um, and maybe that's why we have that same word. Or perhaps it existed in both the Didache and Q, because the Didache probably is older than the than the uh, than the Gospels that we have, uh, and the Didache is a how-to manual. I've told you that before. So it's an interesting word. Uh, when when uh, when Jerome was translating um, the Vulgate, which was the first time that the Bible was translated from uh, the Hebrew and the Greek into Latin in its entirety. There had been people who translated parts, but Jerome sat down, by, I forget which Pope asked him to do it, and he translated the Bible into Latin. And when he came to this word in Greek, and he, he didn't know exactly what to do with it, so he translated it actually two different ways. Um, in Matthew's Gospel, he translated it as supersubstantial. And in Luke's Gospel, he translated it as daily. Two words that mean completely different things. Um, we've lost Jerome's translation that he used in Matthew. We don't use it. Um, super substantial. Right? Where did he come up with that? Well, epi means epic, big, over the top, right? You know, something is an epic, uh, you know, success or epic. Uh, what do I want to say? Opening. You, know, you maybe use that word for movies and things like. It's an epic tale. It's, a, it's over the top. It's really big. Okay, osio means substantial or substance. So over the top of being substantial, super substantial. Um, and so that's what that means. And I present to you that that's probably a better translation of that because as I mentioned, when you're reading through that, our Father heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All those things are really big, right? All those things are over the top. Those things are magnificent things. And then the prayer comes down to daily, which is our meager substance for to get us through this day. Rather, if we translate there, give us this day our your super substantial bread. Okay. 
what we end up with, as I've told you before in sermons, um, is you end up with the Eucharist. You end up with communion. You end up with the body of Christ. That bread that is the body of Christ is what that is. That feeds you forever, eternal bread. Uh, it goes on for all time. Um, so it is a, a great <laughs> it is a great prayer, and it has a different meaning when you understand it in that context. Um, not that this doesn't feed us. We, we understand that God cares about us, but God cares about us in such a big way. Not just, just, not just our, not just this day, but all time, throughout all eternity. That's what he's given us, bread that will feed us forever, not just today. So I hope that that gives you maybe just a little different feeling to the Lord's Prayer. Um, and I hope that it's a blessing to you today. So... I'm going to cut this off at that because we've gotten kind of long, longer than I like to be on these. Uh, but that's okay. Sometimes you got to go a little longer. And the Lord's Prayer is an important one. Um, so with that, have a super substantial day uh, with that bread that God gave you that will feed you for all eternity. Have a blessed day. And as always, please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. And happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. God bless you guys and gals. Bye-bye.